What does it mean when your quadcopter does this? It means that there's too much noise or vibration getting into your gyro. And that's the situation we're going to troubleshoot today using one of my very own quads. Stay tuned. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and this is FPV Know-It-All, where you learn everything you need to know to get your quadcopter in the air, keep it flying its best, and enjoy the great hobby of FPV. And the problem that we're looking at today is noise. And by noise, I don't mean noise, like on your ears. Yes, our quads are pretty noisy. When we say noise in this context, what we really mean is vibration. We mean vibration from the motors is making a problem for your flight controller. You see, there's a, a feedback loop that happens between the flight controller, the motors, the gyro, and the PID loop that, me that causes physical vibration to be translated into electrical noise, and that can make, well, the gyro and the motors not work right. What happens is that as the motor spins, the prop makes vibration. Just anything spinning really fast is going to vibrate because it's not perfectly balanced. And that is picked up by the gyro. Those vibrations are picked up by the gyro. That's the whole point of the gyro is to measure the movement of the quad. The PID loop then looks at those vibrations and the PID loop's whole job is to try to correct and respond to the movement of the quad. So when you push the stick to the right or to the left, the PID loop makes the quad roll to the right or to the left. But also when the quad moves due to an external influence, like the wind blows or something, when it becomes imbalanced in a way that it's not commanded to do, the PID loop also tries to correct for that. And that's what ends up happening when these vibrations from the motor come in, or they're detected by the gyro and are fed into the PID loop. The PID loop tries to sort of cancel them out. The problem is that these vibrations are happening at such a high frequency that the motors can't possibly cancel them out. Well, it's kind of like a chicken and the egg scenario. The motors can't cancel the vibrations. The motors are causing the vibrations. So when the PID loop says to the ESC, make the motor vibrate just like this, the ESC says to the motor, vibrate just like this. And the motor is just like, oh, I'm just doing my best here, guys. The motor can only change speed so quickly. And the analogy that I like to make is it's like if you had uh, two surfaces rubbing together and, and if you rub them slowly, you won't get a lot of heat buildup. But if you rub them very quickly, you'll get a lot of heat buildup. And then Mr. Miyagi puts his hands on your leg and you're healed and you can go win the karate tournament, right? <laughs> when the PID loop says to the ESC and the ESC says to the motor, Oh, change speed really fast and the motor can't do it the result is heat and that's why if you have too much vibration too much noise one of the symptoms is that your motors will get very very hot but another symptom is that the gyro itself will glitch out you see the gyro in your flight controller is a tiny it's called mems m-e-m-s micro electro mechanical system it's a tiny micro mechanical thing. It's not purely electronic like a transistor. And there's a little wire, a tiny microscopic wire that moves as the quadcopter vibrates. And that wire moving causes a change in the capacitance of a circuit and it's measuring that capacitance. That's how the gyro senses when the quadcopter is moving. If too much noise and vibration gets into the gyro, that sensing wire can hit a mechanical limit and the output can just become garbage. And we can see that in our black box and we're gonna look at the black box in a minute. We can see that in our black box and we can see the effect of that. The manifestation though is that we get gah, 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 twitching like we saw in that video. And whenever you raise the throttle and you see something like that, it is a sure sign that you're getting too much noise and vibration into your gyro. And what we're going to look at today are various ways to try to fix that. But I got to give you a warning. There's no surefire way to fix this problem. There's a series of steps that you take and you hope that one of them fixes it. But at the end of the day, it may not be possible to fix it because 
you're just unlucky. And in fact, I, I, got, I know that you guys want me to solve problems. You want to see problems it's really satisfying. But today's not going to be one of those days. I'm going to tell you beforehand that I, I tried all these steps. And I hope that one of these steps solves your problem if you're having this problem. But these steps didn't solve my problem. And you can see back on the bench right there, that's the quadcopter. The final step is to replace the flight controller. Not necessarily that the flight controller itself is damaged or defective, although it might be. You might just have got unlucky and the gyro chip that's on your flight controller is just particularly sensitive. But it might be that the design of the flight controller is particularly prone to noise. And in this case, that is going to be what ended up happening. But let's go through the steps anyway, because for many of you, the steps I'm going to show you will solve your problem. And in fact, they almost solved my problem, but still not quite. Let's do it. The first thing I want to do is show you guys a short flight so you can see how it manifested. Look for that little shimmy, especially as I raise the throttle up high. Now, the first thing to do when you experience something like this is to look for any possible sources of vibration and solve them. So if you're running old beat up props, go ahead and replace them. Uh, if you give your give your frame a once over to look for broken standoffs, loose screws, missing screws, anything that might be causing a, a cracked plate, like you've got a cracked bottom plate and you haven't noticed it yet. Anything that might be causing any kind of resonance or vibration to be getting into the flight controller when it didn't before. However, in a lot of cases, that's not going to be what what solves this issue because in order for this to actually come out your quad would have to be like right on the edge of having too much noise and then that one little broken prop or bent motor shaft puts it over the edge and if you've been flying for a while and suddenly this started happening maybe that's what's causing it in this case this was a new build so I knew everything was tight and fresh and clean. And, and what that means is that there's some fundamental interaction between the motors, the frame, and the flight controller that's causing this problem. And in that case, it, it's almost better if you find, oh, I had a bent motor shaft. Because at least then, I mean, it sucks that you have to change your motor, but at least then you know what to solve it. In this case... Um, you're looking at a scenario where the worst case scenario is you have to change your motor entirely or change your ESC or change your flight controller because something about them is they're not happy together. In this case, though, I, so I checked all those things and they were all fine. The next thing to do is to soft mount the flight controller. If you have hard mounted your flight controller, a lot of times you get away with it and you don't have problems. The first thing to do is to soft mount the flight controller. And the second thing to do is to add a capacitor which will help smooth out the electrical noise that is making this problem worse so we said that vibration can cause this problem to manifest but also if you have a lot of electrical noise in the system it can kind of confuse the gyro and make this happen and a capacitor helps solve that those are the two first two things to do but I did that and I'm going to show you the results. But before I show you the results of those, let's take a look at a well, black box log and see what this little shimmy looks like in black box so we can see what's really going on under the hood. So here we are in black box explorer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the gyros up. So we'll do graph setup and we will add graph gyros and uh, save that and then I will press the Z key to zoom all the way out and the S key to remove all smoothing. And we can see that this doesn't look particularly noisy. We, uh, the thickness of the line is what tells us how much noise we're getting. And the thicker the line, the noisier it is. So we can see here the yellow line, yaw axis, is fairly noise free. The blue line has a little bit of noise. And if we look for scenarios where the throttle is high, 
Maybe we can see some problems. Aha! But we immediately see some problems here. As the throttle goes up, look what happens to the pitch line. Do you see that the pitch line starts to get super noisy? And we see these big spikes right here, these lines, these big spikes manifesting on the yaw axis. This is, the, this is where something is going wrong. Something isn't, this is our problem happening right here. As you're looking at black box, especially on modern versions of Betaflight, the, the gyro traces often look very clean. Betaflight's filtering, its software filtering is very, very effective. And it can make even a quad with noise problems look like it's fairly clean. Uh, this is relevant because the glitching that we get is happening to the gyro before the soft filters. So we can get scenarios, and I don't think I was logging the the, the, the pre-filter debug. Let's check, but I don't think I was. Um, we can get scenarios where the graphs look pretty clean, but in fact, you are having noise issues. Uh, it's going to be debug. I don't appear to have been logging debug. Yeah, no. So we can't see the pre-filter noise. But anytime you see a twitch like this, that is a definite indication that you had some problem. And as we zoom in, let's zoom in a little bit. We can see a little closer what that looks like. You see how zooming out sort of compresses things and makes it more obvious where the where the radical change happened. Pitch axis is nice thin line, very clean. And then as the throttle starts to get raised, look at the throttle here. Ah, it gets really thick and noisy. And then blah, we have this, this twitching problem. And as we zoom in, we can see that it manifests as this sudden spike here on the yaw axis. The reason that the glitching usually manifests on the yaw axis goes back to the physical design of the gyro sensor. I don't really know enough about it to say why that is, but that's usually what we see. Even if the vibration itself is primarily happening on the pitch axis, as it is in this case, the glitching seems to happen primarily on the yaw axis. And here we're looking at the yaw PIDs and gyro on the top and the motor outputs on the bottom. And we can see the yaw P term is twitching in response to that gyro output. So the, the gyro is telling the PID controller that the quad has moved and the quad is trying to compensate for that by, by making the motors move a certain way in response. You can see here the motor output twitches as well. Uh, the motor output is especially noticeable if I just play this back. Let's play this back at just like 15% speed and watch up here at the motor outputs. Watch what happens when we get to this point. Boom, 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 boom. See, they're twitching there. Now there's a little bit of a chicken and the egg. I already used that analogy this video. There's a little bit of a chicken and the egg scenario here, which is, did the quad move because the motors twitched? Or did the motors twitch because the gyro incorrectly said that the quad moved? And we, we have to take my word for it that the answer here is that the gyro twitches are bogus. But it could be the case that you had like a desyncing, a slightly desyncing motor. If that were the case, the motor would desync, the quad would twitch or an arm would dip and the PID controller would try and compensate. And we would kind of see the exact same thing just sort of in reverse. It's just the, the, the way that this is manifesting it's really clear to me just from because I've seen a lot of these that this is noise. When you see a quad kind of making those little little skiddy sort of twitches on the yaw axis, that's almost always noise. That's the problem. It's probably not a desync. In the case of a desync, what we would probably see is a single motor twitching and an arm dropping. Also, desyncs don't tend to recover as quickly as this. So instead of a tit tit tit, we would see a whoo whoo right? It would kind of fall and catch. And that would kind of be a desync. But it is very, it is valid. It would be valid to ask, well, we've got a chicken and the egg. Is it, which is, which happened? Did the motor glitch and then the gyro sensed it? Or did the gyro glitch and the PID loop made the motor respond? In this case, it is definitely the latter. So I said that the first thing to do is to soft mount your flight controller and add a capacitor. I'm going to give you more details about that in a second. And I'm going to tell you some of the other things that you might think would work, but that actually aren't even worth trying. But before we do that, let's see how much of an improvement soft mounting and adding a capacitor made on the quadcopter's flight. Here we go.
what I hope you see there is that although we've gotten rid of the worst of the shimmy, the quad still isn't flying quite right. We're getting really bad prop wash oscillation. It's getting really out of control. And if you just listen to the motors when I throttle up, it sounds that you can hear the kind of twitchy roughness in the motors, even though it never quite gets to the point where it actually sort of twitches and falls out. So it's, I still don't like the way it's flying and I'm still gonna need to do more to fix it. <laughs> So let's wrap this video up. I want to fill in some details that you guys are probably wondering, like what capacitors should you use if you're going to install capacitors? What soft mounts might you use? And I also want to tell you about a couple things that you might think would fix it, but actually probably won't. Uh, well, that's the one we'll do first. You might think that you could address this issue by changing the software filters, the low pass filter, the notch filters, the dynamic filter, the Coleman filter, if you've got that, all those software filters. And the actual truth is that they are not going to solve the underlying issue because what's happening is that the physical gyro mechanism is experiencing too much noise and it is outputting garbage data. And you can't fix that physical problem with a software solution. You can put a Band-Aid on it. You could, you could cover it up, but the problem is that once that garbage data comes out of the gyro, it is so strong that the kind of soft filter you would need to clean it up would make your quad fly terrible. So you got to solve this physical problem with a physical solution. You need to get rid of physical vibration, new props, clean motors, check your quad for damage or soft mount the flight controller to protect it from the vibration. Or you've got to physically clean up the electrical signal with a capacitor. So then what, what, do, you, what do you need to use if you decide to put a capacitor on? I have another video with, my, with a capacitor spreadsheet of all the possible capacitors you could pick and some good ones. I'll link to that in the video description. But in general, what you want is a low ESR, equivalent series resistance, low ESR electrolytic capacitor. Um, this is going to be one of these sort of cylinder shaped ones, not the little tiny ones. And if you're not sure if it's low ESR in general, if it's 105 degree rated, then it's low ESR. But again, just go to the, go to the spreadsheet linked in the video description and you'll, you'll get a list of capacitors you can use. If you have individual ESCs, the best thing you can do is to get like a 330 microfarad capacitor, put it on each ESC. And for voltage, uh, for a 4S quad, you're going to want to probably use 25 volt capacitors. For a 6S quad, you might want to use 35 volt capacitors. 50 volt would be better for 6S, but they get pretty big. So uh, most people who run 6S use 35 volt. For 4S, uh, 25 volt is the best one. Um, if you have a 4-in-1, then the best thing you're going to be able to do is to put a single uh, uh, capacitor on the power lead. And that's just what you got to live with. But you hope that a four in one has less noise overall than individual ESCs. I don't know. That's, that's just the situation you're at. If you need soft mounting, many flight controllers these days come with gummies that soft mount. If you want to have additional soft mounting, you can use these rubber standoffs. I'll put a link to that also in the video description. And if all of that doesn't work, then you're kind of screwed. You got to just change your hardware. You're probably not going to change your frame. And in this case, the frame is a Armitan Chameleon. So, I mean, we know that that frame is stiff. It doesn't have noise issues. It doesn't have any mechanical problems. So you got to kind of bite the bullet. I say, am I going to change my motors or am I going to change my flight controller? Another thing you could try to do is you could, I, I did try changing from D-Shot 1200 down to D-Shot 600. Then sometimes that'll make the motors run smoother. And also, you know, going from one to the other, and also changing your motor timing 
uh, if you have BL Heli 32, change your motor timing to auto and change your PWM frequency in BL Heli to 48 kilohertz. These are all things that can smooth the motors a little bit and might make it, it's really a long shot, but maybe worth a try. Ultimately, soft mounting capacitor is the answer. And in this case, what I'm doing, none of that fixed it. And finally, I'm just going to blame the flight controller and say, you're out of, you're fired. I'm switching flight controllers. And in, in, it might be as simple as this particular flight controller had a problem, but I'm not going to take a chance on putting the same one in there. I'm going to put a different one in there entirely. Even though they have a, a sim, similar gyro chip, they both have the ICM2802 or very similar gyro chip. I don't know, just but the placement on the board, the physical, the electrical design, all that stuff can affect I'm just going to go to a different flight controller. Um, that sucks. But hopefully the things I've shown you will help you, number one, recognize when this problem is affecting you because really the answer is to solve it physically first and don't waste your time trying to pid tune it out. And then if it is affecting you, hopefully one of the things they've showed you helps you solve it and before you have to go and just buy another flight controller. <laughs> because we can't all be YouTubers and have a stack of flight controllers over on the shelf waiting for us to review them. Um, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know any questions you've got down in the video comments. I try and answer all the comments and questions that I can. That's what I live for. <laughs> so let me know down there. Thank you for watching. Happy flying.